to be part nine of uh, Far Beyond the Field, uh, Women Poets of Haiku. This one is Tagami Kikusha, 1753 to 1826. She's a uh, proficient in calligraphy, plays Kyoto, writes Tonka, knows Chinese poetry, wrote haiku, and she traveled a lot. 30 years maybe of traveling. She follows in the footsteps of Basho. Her name after she's married at 16, her husband died in eight years, she becomes a uh, anti-feminine, feminine in a way, just calls herself Kikishu, discard chrysanthemum. Father was a samurai. And she traveled around by utilizing the Shiko school of haiku, which means that everyone in the club, uh, she got to stay at their place and uh, it's like a travel club that writes haiku. <laughs> it's like an Airbnb. Uh, if you were in a haiku writing club, you stop at their house. And, and she earned money by painting. She was a painter. She earned some quick cash by painting. Anyways, her poem says, On some days, not even a cuckoo calls to this known travel. Not on some days, not even a cuckoo calls on this to this lone traveler. Leaves of sweet rush placed on the eaves, the smell of the spa. Leaves of sweet rush placed on the eaves, the smell of the spa. Lost in the woods, only the sound of a leaf falling on my head. Lost in the woods, only the sound of a leaf falling on my head on Mount Miko. <laughs> Not a speck of dirt mixed with the snow this morning. The rays of the sun. Not a speck of dirt mixed with the snow this morning. The rays of the sun. Watching Watching Cormorant fishing at the Niagara River, reveling in the dark sadness of things, the fisherman's torch. Some of these are referring to a poem written by Basho. Basho had written about the fisherman. Watching coral cormorant fishing at the Nagara River, right, revealing in the dark the sadness of things, the fisherman's torch. All things that melt are turning for dawn, spring snow. All the snow melts everywhere, the fragrance of wild plum blossoms. All the snow melts everywhere, the fragrance of wild plum blossoms. When a cloud parts with the low lying clouds, very blossoms. 
when a cloud parts with the low-lying clouds, carry loss energy. That first cry was not my fancy, the mountain cuckoo. That first cry was not my fancy, mountain cuckoo. Here she says, Hajimi no mo, soro mini iti nashi, hoto to gisu. So she really means hoto to gisu, which is the mountain cuckoo. But why is it not her fancy? She says, that first cry was not my fancy, a mountain cuckoo. The moon and I left alone, cool on the bridge. Looking like clouds, only when they crumble, clouds Peaks. Looking like clouds only when they crumble, cloud, cloud peaks. Morning glories in the evening. They let us admire their birds sing. Morning glories in the evening. They let us admire their buds. Hmm. Unlikely flowers, when they bloomed, yet now these gourds. Unlikely flowers, when they bloomed, yet now these gourds. Snipe on the wind. Left behind the murmur of a little stream. Snipe on the wing, left behind the murmur of a little stream. I guess when the snipe flew up, it left a little murmur in the water. And here is an example of where she's thinking of Basho. But Basho, in his famous poem, says, Reish Basho, he says, wait a minute, maybe alluded to Segyo. Segyo says, even a person without feeling would be moved to this sadness when a snipe takes wing from the marsh on the autumn nightfall. Hmm. That's from Segyo. Even a person without feelings would be moved to this sadness when a snipe takes wing from the marsh on the autumn nightfall. And she says, while well, she's, she's apparently thinking of Segyo. <laughs> snipe on the wing, left behind the murmur of a little stream. She says, wild azaleas on Mount Aso, learning how to blaze. The wild azaleas on Mount Aso are learning how to blaze. Hmm. Now. Uh, that may have been written when she's climbing up near a volcano. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're learning how to blaze from the volcano. Mm -hmm. Oh, visiting Mount Abaku in the Uji 
one year. One step outside the temple gate, it's Japan, a tea picker song. Hmm. There's something about green tea. Visiting Mount Abaku in Uji, one year, one step outside the temple gate, it's Japan, a tea picker song. This Uji was famous and still is famous for producing green tea. Mm. Mm -hmm. She says, after visiting Oshino Hills on the summer hills, I saw a cloud. That's all there was. All she saw was a cloud. Accompanied by once observed, are you to look at cherry blossoms only when they are in full bloom? Oh, I agree with him. I also feel it is disappointing to see something well past its time. On the other hand, I know someone else said there is nothing to have in mind that cannot be turned into a flower. Yoshino is renowned for its cherry blossoms. Um, but no, that's the wrong group mate, probably. <laughs> is this how autumn comes to my life alone? Rainy nightfall. Is this how autumn comes to my life alone? Rainy nightfall. Seeing chrysanthemums in bloom near Urin Temple, toward the white clouds, chrysanthemums by the road, breathing their scent. Does a dustpan share in the Buddha's nature? Blossoms shade. Does a dustpan share in the Buddha's nature? Blossom shade. The haiku is accompanied by the poet's drawing up a puppy sitting on a dustpan with a broom lying nearby. The drawing alludes to a passage from the Sen classic Mu Mankan, Great West Pass. A monk once asked Chu Chao, Does a puppy share in the Buddha's nature? Chu Chao answered, Mu. Chu Chao Mu is the no that is identical with the yes in the deeper sphere of Sen. Here's a poem about Echo. Her one poem echoes a poem of Basho. Basho's poem goes, So exciting, and after a while, so sad. Cormorant fishing. That's the one where she talked about fishing. And the other poem, there's another poem of Basho. How solemn, green leaves, young leaves, and the, through them the rays of sun. Now that one alludes to Mount Nico. We were reading from, oh, what's her name? Tagami Kikusha. And from far beyond the field, 